Good afternoon. I'd like to share with you our experience in the Philippines about the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro. Let me start with some global context other countries see in our process, in our domestic process in the Philippines. Our process has been widely viewed as a bright spot in today's particularly conflict-ridden world. It came after a relative scarcity in concluded negotiations since the second decade of the 21st century. In contrast, during the first decade, so many significant agreements were forged in various countries, like South Sudan, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, Burundi, Somalia, Senegal, and there's the case of Aceh. The peace agreement in Aceh was concluded in 2005, and the United Kingdom Northern Ireland talks, bringing an end to the Irish Republican Army, was effectively concluded in 2006. However, by the second decade of the century, we saw the resurgence of many, many other conflicts festering like the one in the Gaza Strip, Afghanistan, unsettled conflicts in the aftermath of the Arab Spring, some assuming new dimensions, such as what we are seeing now in Libya, Syria, Iraq, and of course in Ukraine, where we saw the unintended consequence of the shooting down of an airplane loaded with civilians in view of the ongoing offensives taking place in that part of the world. That is why it's not a small thing that in the Philippines, we were actually able to bring forward a peaceful settlement of a conflict that is Islamist in nature, which could easily find ties with other Islamic movements going on around the world and are generated largely through self-radicalization or the setting of self-driven jihadist cells. That is why in some quarters, this agreement is recognized as a model. In March last year, the Philippine government signed a historic agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, concluding 17 years of protracted negotiations and ushering the end of four decades of cyclical, deadly, damaging, and displacing armed conflict, which has resulted in no victors, only victims. At this time, the Bangsamoro Basic Law is being discussed in our legislature. It is basically the legal translation of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bangsamoro and was submitted to the two houses of the Philippine Congress September of last year. Extensive public hearings have been conducted and finished by the House of Representatives, while the Senate is still to finish their public hearings. There has been some delay, though, in the legislative proceedings due to an unfortunate incident six weeks ago when a special action force of the Philippine National Police was able to neutralize a Malaysian terrorist in an area near the camps of the Moro Slavic Liberation Front, but suffered 44 casualties. The possible involvement of the MILF has brought about public outrage and plenty of negative sentiments on the proposed Bangsamoro Basic Law. We are still hopeful, though, that ultimately, reason will prevail over emotions, as well as a strong push from the President and congressional leaders will carry us through and lead to its approval by mid-year this year. Once the law is passed, a referendum in the affected geographical areas will be held after which a transition authority 
will be established with members appointed by the President. They will hold office after June 30 next year, after which they will be replaced by the regular Bangsamoro government to be elected in May 2016. In the meantime, we have a confidence-building program with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front so that people in former conflict areas can start feeling the dividends of peace. Called Sajahatra Bangsamoro, it aims to lift the health, education, and livelihood conditions of MILF communities, stop the degradation into poverty of the victims of war, and prepare them for their journey to self-governance and dignified way of life. Late last year, the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front launched the Bangsamoro Development Plan, a short and medium-term strategic vision that sets a clear path to inclusive and sustainable peace and development. The plan was crafted from the hearts and minds of those who have struggled for so long to bring peace in the communities. But in every process, the quest for human security must be complemented by steadfast political security. Through the decommissioning of former combatants and putting their weapons beyond use, the Bangsamoro hopes to build a protective mantle against crime and terror, improve security conditions, and drive up investments. Pluralism is key to our efforts. We are bringing communities torn apart by conflict to the forefront of democratic participation, consensus building, and dialogic action. Where every voice is heard, people resolve their differences by voting with their hands, not their guns leading to decisions and programs for the welfare of all. Yet, every peace process is unique. Every situation driven by violence and extremism has its own ideological, cultural, and historical underpinnings. Nevertheless, our experience in the Philippines teaches us that four imperatives are of primary importance in resolving violence and extremism and thereby enabling us to win the peace. These imperatives are leadership, trust, historical justice, and supportive consensus. For instance, we would never have reached this point in our search of enduring peace if it were not for the unswerving leadership of our president, Benigno S. Aquino III, and that of Chairman al Hadz Murad Ibrahim of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. We would never have reached this point without the sturdy bridge of mutual trust that has driven principled negotiations and earnest, earnest confidence building. We would have never reached this point if not for the promise of historical justice to right the wrongs of the past and repair the social, economic, cultural, and ethnic pain and damage inflicted upon the victims of war. We would never reach this point without the national, multi-sectoral, and interfaith consensus that peace is the only way, and also very important, we would never have reached this point without the collective backing of concerned nations and multilateral institutions. Through an inclusive and lasting peace, we want the Bank Samoro to be an anchor of common prosperity and collective security, not just for the Philippines, but for the region. We envision the Bank Samoro to be part of the larger perimeter of vigilance against the spread of extremism and a bridge of moderation among the great fates of the world. The work 
may seem never-ending, but the rewards are great and infinite for us, for you, for this generation, and those that will come after it. Like the oceans, the waves of peace must be constant and unyielding as it surges and ebbs until it lands on all shores. Altogether, we are the wave of peace. We cannot stop until we rest on every shore on earth. Thank you very much.